come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to take over your world. These are the Internet Radio Superstar. Holly, I'm Michaela. And I'm Colin. It sounded very like seductive. We're going to take over your world. We're taking world. over yes. your world. I like, I like oh. it. Oh. <laughs> uh, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin! What journey did you take us on? To- and by journey, I mean, what Pepsi challenge are we about to yeah, do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we were doing a cinematic Pepsi challenge. <laughs> well, this was inspired because on, I can't remember what episode it was holly wasn't here it was when we, i, I we it was when i was in alaska it had to have been it was um yeah. was it the ruins was it that one because you weren't right. here for that one right. right yeah yeah and you did that when i was in alaska so yeah that makes sense. i think it was the ruins i don't know how it got brought up but colin and i basically were like well manhunter is obviously the superior movie and sean was like no i don't think so and that almost <laughs> broke up the freak show <laughs> <laughs> so i figured that sooner or later Somebody was going to bring Red Dragon to yeah. the freak show. And so I was like, okay, we got to do Manhunter. Yes. <laughs> you beat him to the punch. Yes. Yeah. So we did Manhunter tonight. What year was Manhunter? It was made in 1986. 86. So pre Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Because yes. Silence of the Lambs was 91. Mm-hmm. And then um, they made the novel Red Dragon into a movie in 2006. Two. Two. 2002. 2002. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they this is, movie is yeah. or this story the book by Thomas Harris has mm-hmm. then been adapted three times so you can right. see it as Manhunter Red Dragon mm-hmm. or uh, as part of the Hannibal TV show right. I believe season three okay. and I, we, I never watched the show so I'm not familiar with that well, we also have the movie around. Hannibal and then we have Hannibal Rising which was another prequel. Movie, does it right? does it do yeah but i don't think will graham no but these are all the same universe though like oh, same, oh yeah i'm like, so talking yeah. about the yeah. same it's hannibal cinematic universe here yeah i think yeah. the hannibal cinematic universe is everything except yeah well except this this one and the hannibal tv show are outside of yeah. the cinematic universe yeah. but i think the clarice tv show oh, yeah was part of the i forgot that existed the I anthony hopkins universe yes. right where yeah. anthony hopkins mm-hmm. played hannibal yeah Hector. Um, Lots of pick and choose your own Hannibal here. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> got I mean, a little bit of everything for you. <laughs> well, I guess Hannibal Lecter is. Um, I mean, he was like. I mean, probably. I was going to say, was he more mainstream? He achieved, I think, like the popularity of like Freddy Krueger. Yes, absolutely. You yeah, know, more 100%. so even than like Jason or Michael Myers. Michael Myers, I think, is there people now. People quote <laughs> Silence of the Lambs and don't know they're quoting Silence of the Lambs. Mm. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't realize Hello Clarice is from yeah. that movie. Like, and like I, among I other things, I guarantee just anyone on the street, like a someone my parents age or mm. grandparents age if you're like who's jason they're gonna be like who if you're like who's hannibal lecter they're gonna have an idea who that yeah. is yeah 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 they see they, him on the cart like they at least see that visual in their mind you know yeah, yeah. the mask mm-hmm. the, yeah i think that's the thing though that the that silence of the lambs did was it because i mean silence of the lambs is shot like a horror movie mm-hmm. yes you know uh and so it kind of established the look of the the uh hannibal lecter movies you know mm-hmm. putting him in a basement you know in a, a yeah. gothic basement <laughs> or gothic i don't know it's a you know creepy yeah. underground it's, you know he lives underground yeah right it's you know, like the monster it's, it's like a dungeon in arkham asylum <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so it's kind of interesting i guess to see how that novel was because the novel predates the silence of the lambs book uh written by thomas harris i'm not sure when the novel mm-hmm. was, was written and then uh, the director of this movie is Michael Mann. Mm-hmm. Um, who we all should know. Yeah. Who, if you don't know Michael Mann, then you're doing your film education wrong mm-hmm. because he's directed some of the best movies ever made. Yeah. Probably. No, like, he's one of the, yeah. 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 He's yeah. up there as one of the greatest. He has very few misses. Yeah. Right. Like, cause, like Black Hat is probably what his like biggest bomb of a movie. Because nobody that movie made like negative Which money. Which is why right? it does feel strange to bring a Michael Mann movie to the Freak Show. Yeah, yeah it does feel yeah, strange yeah. because it feels like it's all too good for the Freak Show, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, because I'm trying to like, think. We were all like, watching this tonight in silence, but not for the usual reasons we're silent. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, he had done uh, the movie Thief. I can't, I can't remember if that was his first movie. It was, yeah. 
That's a pretty good movie. It is. James Caan, yeah. I really like Thief. And That's like, his first movie? Yeah. I think it's his first mm-hmm. very yeah. accomplished. And I'm like, he yeah. must have, yeah. I think he do, he had done maybe some television work prior, but obviously the thing that after Thief, and this is the era, right? Mm-hmm. 1986 is, I believe, two that when this was made is two years after Michael Mann basically redefined what is uh, hip, cool, and fashionable on television by creating the show Miami, Miami Vice. Vice. Yes. So there's a, there's this explosion of interest in like who is this Michael Mann person? <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember the articles in TV Guide, you know, about That's Miami so cool. Vice because <laughs> yeah. it was there was a, I remember a tie-in between like there was always this comparison of like the visual language of Miami Vice and MTV, which was right. also you know like on the scene for a few years, but the fact that they would use you know, the same kind of fast cutting, you know, mo- musical montages, like a music video, that kind of stuff. And I mean, you're seeing that in this movie that, that he's that from the same him. era. Yeah. The weird one is the last of the Mohicans. That is the weird one. Mm. I always forget he did that one because it doesn't sound right. Yeah, it doesn't. He can't no, do, he can't do like Vice City lighting in that movie. <laughs> right. No, it's very out of character Yeah. But I I I grew up watching the movie. It's a good all movie, yeah. I yeah. watch that all the time. Oh, it's great, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and I keep thinking that the the thing where Michael Mann kind of because I mean obviously he did Heat, which right. is one of the greatest, exactly the greatest movies of all movies. time. Yeah, and now so he's good. written the sequel novel Heat Two. I mm-hmm. think he can. I don't know if he's prepping to make that a movie. I mean, like you know, he can't use Val Kilmer guys, so, mm-hmm. but um, uh, he had uh, kind of pioneered. Um, the transition to like digital cinema it, where he cool. would use um because he did it in collateral i think it was maybe the first mm-hmm, one mm-hmm. and then the weird one was public enemies where it's yes. like we're going to use this digital photography to do this period movie and it and then, shows yeah it looks weird it looks weird it, it looks very yeah yeah i bet it looks even i haven't rewatched that movie in a while but it looks even weirder now i'm sure it has aged poorly yeah mm-hmm it but just I looks didn't. Off. <laughs> Have you seen uh, his remake, his feature film version of Miami Vice? Yes, mm-hmm. and I, it was actually pretty good. It I know it's pretty good. good. It's, yeah. like yeah. A, it's yeah. one of those movies that like got rediscovered a couple years ago. It did, it was yeah. Like you know, Miami Vice is really good, but I yeah. think everybody was expecting. They're expecting the show, yeah, yeah. and that's not what it no. is. No, at all. he's going like this is where my stylistic, you know, yeah. thing is now. Right, looking yeah. at the same subject matter. It's like think it's about what different. I usually do, right. but I'm doing it Miami Vice. Yeah, that's a really good movie. It is a good it movie. Is. And I don't know if he is working on anything now, aside from How maybe old is he now? Heat 2. Um, oh, no, he is. You know what he's doing? He he's doing? doing the Ferrari movie, Enzo Ferrari. Oh, oh. that's cool. And it's Adam Driver, I think. Oh, oh is that a Ridley oh, Scott movie? Up. I think it's a Michael Mann movie. I think it's a Michael Mann movie. Are we sure? What's it called? Um, okay. I think it's, it's the like, latest thing on his. Uh, is he directing? Do you think? I believe because there's a TV show called Tokyo Vice that he's directing episodes of, but hmm. I don't know what that is. Well, I've doesn't never show heard of Ferrari this. in there? No, I doesn't. Maybe it's a Ridley Scott movie. I thought it was like anyway. I don't know. Sidebar. <laughs> uh, he did get into television again after um, Miami Vice with a show called Crime Story. Hmm. And crime story was kind of a noir like la noir uh cop show but it had dennis farina in it hmm. he dennis, sticks with his guys yeah, huh? yeah, yeah i love it <laughs> so he's like i can't remember if dennis farina was in thief but dennis farina is in this movie mm-hmm. directors, uh, of his, directors of his caliber generally stay with their people yeah mm-hmm. um i guess um the the whole the Tom, so the Thomas Harris and I I honestly don't know that much about Thomas Harris or his background or like how he got into mm-hmm. making these uh, stories about uh, the FBI and behavioral profiling. Um, but God bless you, sir. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> I remember when this movie came out, I saw it on TV. This is before Silence of the Lambs, but it was the first time that I remember being introduced to the idea of someone. You know, working in law enforcement that would try and adopt the mm-hmm. uh, the mental um, you know persona of the person that trying to get were into the psyche after. of. And from that idea, yeah. a thousand CBS shows were born. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a has been the last twenty years of television. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and no signs of stopping. Like it'll no, go on for I mean, forever. I do know something, and maybe you guys have. If, if, heard anything about this the guy who actually started the real life um behavioral science division of Mm -hmm, the fbi mm -hmm. john douglas Mm -hmm. yeah and that was in the 
70s, I think, mm -hmm. right? And so he was the guy who pioneered the department. And I think uh, the Jack Crawford character in Thomas Harris's books is basically supposed to be John Douglas, gotcha. right? And then um, there's that show Mind Hunter. I was going to say yeah. we we're familiar with this, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is a great, it was a, a great, great, show. great fucking show. I think I, I after watching this movie, I was like, I think I got to rewatch Mind Hunter. I was now. thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got the itch for true crime FBI shit now. But nobody in that show. Itch. That's that's like a. It, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a fictionalized redoing of the the foundings of the behavioral science department with the fbi yeah but it touches on real yeah killers right. and yeah stuff. but there's yeah. no john douglas specifically in it. I, mean, it's, I, think it's, I think it's loosely based on the actual guys but yeah. loosely yeah because yeah. I, don't, I don't think john douglas was actually the the profiler he was like the head of it but somehow he pioneered the the mm -hmm. science of like we can interview serial killers. Mm -hmm. We can learn their motivations in order to catch other mm -hmm. serial killers. Yeah. The psychology of a killer. Yeah. yeah. And that's basically what the premise of Manhunter is. Um, mm -hmm. It's got William Peterson in it. Yeah, it does. And uh, he, of course, like, I think typecasting, right? I mean, he wanted to start in how many seasons of CSI? Oh my god, I think he's <laughs> still doing it. Yeah, endless. Yeah, is he still doing it? I thought he quit I don't at know. some point. I, thought he was I have still no doing idea. It. I, don't, uh, I, I mean, what else out. does he I have don't to keep do? Up with you know, stuff. like no offense, but like it's not like he has a ton of other stuff to say. No fear to. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fear, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. We did yeah. fear on this we show. We did so do fear. That was the end. So we need one more uh, William Peterson movie. Um, I was. He was in ten episodes of CSI Vegas this year. Oh, so there you go. Go, he's reprising his role as as uh gil grissom there you go gil grissom everybody you know out what? there is like yeah they know who gil grissom is dude you get that paycheck <laughs> get that paycheck dude, he was in 196 episodes yeah. of csi he's probably was, made a shit ton of money he's working yeah god bless him how many years that show Jesus. went on yeah. i mean he was like the flagship CSI. yeah 13 years good for him, Jesus good for him. Well, before that, I remember he was, uh, I took notice of him for two movie performances, and they mm -hmm. were almost back to back, and it was uh, William Friedkin's To Live and Die in L.A., okay. which you should see. It's a good, uh, Willem Dafoe's in it as a counterfeiter, and uh, uh, William Peterson is the guy who's the Secret Service agent that's going after him, and uh, Manhunter. And then, I think the next time I noticed that he popped up, he was Pat Garrett in uh, Young Guns 2. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and moving on from that, yes. <laughs> and then CSI. Uh, well, fear. And then, fear. Uh, yeah. CSI. Fear. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's Will Graham, and mm -hmm. uh, Will Graham is a former FBI agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess we are going to do some comparisons to it. We have to. We have to. Honestly, like watching this movie, I was like, I have so many things to talk about, like between the two. Yeah. Because right. we did do our homework and watch Red Dragon. Yeah. In and I like, we this. just watched it today. Yeah. So like, yep. we're fresh off it. Right. Okay. I'm, right. I'm the only yeah. one out of here because I, I didn't, but I read the book yeah. this yes. year, like yeah. a couple months now, ago. Yeah. <laughs> to, be fi to be fair, I we are not going to say which one you should watch over the other. Yeah. We're strictly, we're going to. We're reviewing my we're reviewing Manhunter, we're reviewing yeah. Manhunter, but we do have to compare them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um Edward Norton plays him in uh, Which I guess a point red dragon, I'm sorry. Like Edward Norton over William Peterson, like uh, I, I think yeah. that's a better like, cast. I choice. like William Peterson and I think he's I do fantastic too. in this. Yeah. But Edward Norton. Yeah. Man. Especially, I'm totally going the other way on this, really? but especially, yeah. But uh, I think it's this is a tough role, though, because you uh, have a lot of scenes just talking to yourself yeah. and mm -hmm. nobody else. A yeah. lot of scenes. And you got to convey, like, expo dump and convey some important emotion and stuff. Here. It's a tough role. It so, is a tough role. But I, I agree. By the end of it, I was really into William Peterson, especially. I was yeah. like, okay, the more I watch this, the more I come around on him. Like, no, that's it. Yeah. Like, the more you get into it, the, yeah. I think the more he gets into it. Right. Because at the beginning, I was like, oh, this is going to be a stretch. Like, because watching Red Dragon, like Edward Norton, like as soon as you jump into the movie, yeah. I'm like, I believe this guy. Yeah. Like, I, I can see like the pain in his eyes in the first like five minutes. Right. But him, but Peterson, I feel like it wasn't until like halfway through, maybe towards the end. I was like, all right, I'm on board. When he he's, had that panic attack, that's yeah. when the shift happened. And you're like, okay, now he's, he's starting to crack. And I can see the real it. person. Well, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this, I guess, because this is, I guess, maybe the way that these two actors, the way I think that they, they differentiated their approach. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like Edward Norton has had a experience in the past, but basically he has recovered from it? 
Well, I mean, we see that. Yeah. They should, that's that. the cold open of the movie, so. But you, William it's, Peterson. Yeah. You don't I see that the, here. Yeah, but I get the feeling that, like, he's barely hanging on. Like, when we first meet him, it's like, you know, he is so reserved and so guarded. It's because this thing happened to him in the past. Well, I guess mm-hmm. he caught Hannibal Lecter mm-hmm. and he was injured. And because he was thinking, oh, he, he had manifested basically Hannibal Lecter yeah. in his mm-hmm. brain and <laughs> was still having I, had a psychotic but I episode. Think, I think where I'm at is like, obviously the character is supposed to be like, they spent some time like in a psychiatric ward mm-hmm. to recover from this. Yeah. I get that from Edward Norton. I don't get that from really? Peterson. No, I don't. Oh, see, I guess I was the other side yeah. of that going like this guy feels like he has not completely recovered from this. If you push him a little bit, like he's going to be back there. I guess that made him more wiry yeah. to me and more yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Than Edward Norton, like, because I think the movie's thesis is that or, or the idea of this is right. That, mm-hmm. that, well, let me ask you this is Will Graham highly empathetic empathetic or is he a psychopath himself i'm only I, using the conversation like, with, a, uh, like a dexter situation yeah, yeah. i'm only I, using the the yeah. conversation with hannibal lecter yeah. as, as evidence of this but i think he's highly empathetic i think that's what it is too mm-hmm. yeah just, just he has, because he, he had that con- panic attack he yeah has a conscience like he yeah. actually gets emotional like walking into these crime scenes and you know he's getting in the headspace but also at the same time like he's like has to take a break and like mm-hmm. separate himself because it's too much for him right if he was a psychopath it wouldn't be too much for him right okay not yeah dexter never was but... overwhelmed by anything you know okay yeah. so maybe it's not a psychopath but he is i think this movie is trying to say that he is a killer you know like lecter's like you know if you basically if you want to get the scent smell yourself we're exactly right like, that yeah. really unnerves will mm-hmm. graham but at the end of it it's like he is like I'm going to kill that motherfucker. Like he yeah. is a killer yeah. hunting his prey. Like yeah. that is his like yeah. thing, mm-hmm. Like you know, and they even frame him up in the end scenes. It's like, this is what dollar hide was doing, mm-hmm. creeping mm-hmm. around in the woods mm-hmm. and looking in the windows. And it's like, he's, he is yeah. the guy. He's the threat now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Okay. So we're going to Edward Norton's and one, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, well, but uh, yeah, well, yeah. I'm not. Him. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy his performance, and he's not good at. I'm just yeah, saying, I of the two, I say Point Norton. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but also, William Peterson is he's fantastic, really yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. Because he starts to toward the end of the movie. Is he? I mean, well, because was this movie a, a big deal when it came out, or was it no. very it did under not the radar? do well under the no. radar? Okay. okay. At all. I, yeah, because I okay. found out about it on TV, and then the second time I found out about it. NBC retitled it Red Dragon and ran it, I think, like nice. after the Silence oh, of the Lamb premiere. Yeah, and they called it Red Dragon. So I was going to say, was card. he like, because he doesn't really have the star power. No. No. So no. Yeah, I think okay. it's just, it's a thriller at this point. It's put out yeah. by Dino De Laurentiis' mm-hmm. company the same year they put out the immortal classic Trick or Treat. So they weren't <laughs> working with a whole lot of uh, cash. Pumpkinhead was a couple of years away. Yeah. And, and Maximum Overdrive came out this right, year. This yeah. was the year they had their capital investment. Yeah, where they're going to uh-huh. go make these movies. And then nice. they tanked and they had to fold up shop. But sure. um, but it's had like a second life resurgence. It has like a yeah. huge cult following now. It's on Criterion. People love it. So it's regarded really well regarded now. Mm-hmm. But, but I think yeah. a lot of that's because Silence of the Lambs came out. Like oh, if, yeah, if Silence of the Lambs didn't come out, like would people remember Manhunter? No. I don't know. But now no. it kind of gets no. grouped into that, you know. Mm-hmm. You gotta go back and see the previous portrayal of Hannibal Lecter. Who plays Hannibal Lecter in this movie? Brian Cox. Brian Cox. Which is like not a connection I would have ever made on my own, but I'm glad I saw it. Yeah, I never yeah, you know, I never would have been like, you know, it play this well. Yeah. And, but watching him do it, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna do okay. it. So we're we're are we going with Han, uh, Anthony Hopkins? Is well, the, the, I mean, come on. The problem with that is that was like established before going into to Red going into Red Dragon. You know, you're going to see Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal because we've already had Silence of the yeah. Lambs. So like uh, the brand has already been set. So like that's kind of my issue with that movie is like Brett Ratner made a sequel to something people liked, and to everyone's and to say that's his best movie isn't saying very much. You know, it's like. You're picking up a brand that already does well, so you don't have to put much effort into it, you mm-hmm. know? So. Yeah, it does seem, you know, the reason that they're going to do the second, you know, yeah. Red Dragon is like, well, 
because they'd already done the sequel, yeah. Hannibal. Mm-hmm. And so then they're like, how can we keep milking this? And it's like, mm-hmm. well, the story's been t- told before, but it didn't have Anthony Hopkins exactly. in it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they like include a lot more scenes of Han- Anthony Hopkins. A lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And make it more, which I thought threw Red Dragon's like fulcrum off. You know, it's like, and I guess, you know, the there's a there's a big difference in the way that these two guys adapted this um uh, this story, right? Because yeah. Michael Mann deletes a lot of the book. Does he? Oh yeah. Well, I mean okay, just yeah. in the contrast yeah. between the between two. Between Red movies. Dragon, yeah, even yeah. yeah. But I was I was wondering which one is closer to Red Dragon. The book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it because it includes um But there are there are scenes in this and in Red Dragon that are like word for word exactly yeah. the same. So I assume they're Which word is for word cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's cool to watch them so close back to back and hear like both of them at the same time yeah. in your head. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I mean that's like those are good lines. Those yeah. are good the scenes. Fantastic. You know, they're just lines. like we'll just yeah. we'll, we'll adapt it just as it's written. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's that mm-hmm. good. Yeah, that's I've- that first interaction when Graham and Hannibal are talking, yeah. it is word for word the same in both love movies. It. And I'm just like, oh, this mm-hmm. is great. Because it's it is, it's such good dialogue. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Oh, man, I know this so many of my favorite scenes in both movies mm-hmm. are not even like the action scenes or the horror scenes. It's the back and forth between yeah. characters that's my favorite it's, stuff. It's yeah. such good writing. Yeah. And you know, I mean, when you I was actually thinking this during the movie, I don't think I said it, but like there's a scene where Graham is in a hotel room and he's like taking like one call and then he takes another call. Mm-hmm. And the way that it shot and stylized, I'm like, this actually makes like a guy taking a phone call. Interesting. I yes. mean, the movie is based on a lot of conversations that like feel uh, propulsive, you know. Mm-hmm. There's that whole thing where they find the tooth fairy's uh, message to Lecter mm-hmm. in the oh cell. Oh my god, the tension! Like, yeah, I, maybe I was a little too stoned for that part of the movie. But the whole time <laughs> when they're like, "We got three hours to figure it out and get it back," and and then when they were doing the intense lab work on it, I was so into that. I was like, "Okay, oh my mm-hmm. god, yeah, zoom in on that marker stroke. Mm-hmm. I want to see that." Like, yeah, and, and, and and loved it. And truthfully, like. The way it played in Red Dragon and this, I was equally engrossed in both. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was very, other than Red Dragon, they said it was an hour. It was it. That it makes was an it hour. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Which <sighs> makes sense. Modern times, it's even more like rush. Yeah. That, that actually, that makes sense because computers sense. would be faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, that's, I really like yeah. that. Actually. But I was, but like I said, equally engrossed in both. Yeah. They did it both very well. I love that they just bring in like, there's like this hero's gallery of experts and everything yeah. just come mm-hmm. in. No, let me try this. Let me try this. And it's like so fast paced and snappy yeah. and tense. Like it's yeah. really tense. And, and the one lab is. geek's like, you're sly, but so am I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, is exactly. that line yeah. in both? both? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Both. It, yes. I think yeah. it's in the book. It's so <laughs> great. Yeah. But like, yeah, they managed to make lab work like fast paced and tense and exciting. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. I, yeah, I love how they pull I mean, it that was the part of the appeal, I think, to watching this movie the first time. Like not, you know, with the silence of the lambs obviously does something very similar when they're on the case of buffalo mm-hmm. bill but yeah. like that kind of inside look into like forensic science mm-hmm. but the way that they do you know like okay you i'm getting you on a plane you have to be here we're walking this thing through we got to get this mm-hmm. back into lecture cell before he knows that it's gone mm-hmm. so we're gonna have to go through fingerprint hair analysis and mm-hmm. all this stuff like do, 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 do. and they're all saying this while they're running down hallways full yeah. speed or slamming phones down like yeah. these cops yeah. cannot move fast enough and i love it it's i great. love that at they're always in a panic running somewhere. Yeah, it's it's very good. I mean, like a lot of the movie seems to play out that mm-hmm. way. A lot of conversations that are, you know, like uh, we got to we got to do this mm-hmm. and go down there and peel back the label. Yeah. Which is great when you have like Dennis <laughs> Farina yelling this stuff at people. Right? It's wonderful. I was very nervous. I'm like, OK, I just came off Red Dragon, which yeah. is a 2002 pace. Yeah. And I'm like, this is going to be 80s. Like, but they have the same runtime, don't they? They're very close. Sure. Yeah, They're both really about close. two hours, yeah. Yeah. which is kind of interesting when you, you know, when you determine like how much that um, uh, Michael Mann cut out of the book, because right. he basically he cuts out all of Dollar Hyde's backstory, right? Gotcha. All those flashback scenes. Yeah. I mean, that takes which, up in the book. That's a big running time. You get, or you know, a, a page page yeah. count because you get a lot of like when he was a kid in the. I think it was an orphanage or a nursing home that his mom ran. 
and how you know the kids were picking yeah. on him and like all this stuff. Oh my god, who cares? Yeah, I'm glad that's cut out. Sorry, I don't. Well, <laughs> it, it, it made it interesting because yeah. like it's all you know. Each thing ends up with like some yeah. kind of twist they, taking place in this yeah. kid's head, and you kind of over the and, course of it see how he gets bent. Into yeah, this. and they do kind of hit on that in Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. They hit on it a lot more. Yeah, because mm-hmm. isn't there like um, there's. Like, audio hallucinations or something yes. that he has or memories yes, of his mom yeah he's like mm-hmm. working out and he's like hearing like yep. his memories mm-hmm. and then yep. also also his house is and this is a cool 80s house mm-hmm. in the movie it's the it's, it's the, orphanage, it's the, or, yeah. the abandoned oh, yeah. retirement home or whatever yeah, or, or the nursing yeah. Room, yeah yeah see we see you visually you see mm-hmm. a lot of his history well, we're gonna have to come back to Brian Cox, but mm-hmm. uh <laughs> but I guess first of all like I'm, I'm curious then like the um is it a fair assessment to say that Manhunter is a movie about Will Graham and Red Dragon is a movie about the Tooth Fairy, Francis Dollar? No, Hannibal Lecter. It's a movie about Hannibal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, he has so much screen time, I mean, so much in that movie. It's, uh, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of all three. Yeah. I think it's Graham, Hannibal, and the Tooth Fairy. I think Manhunter kind of equal time. is a better standalone movie, and Red Dragon is a good first movie in a trilogy. And I think that's like why they're so like why it feels weird to compare them sometimes because Manhunter stands alone in a way Red Dragon doesn't. Like, would anyone have watched Red Dragon if they had not seen Silence of the Lambs? Right, because I you mean, know? even that it ends yeah. with like there's a fbi trainee come to see him right like, you know let her in or whatever mm-hmm. he says there at the end of the movie it's like okay we're linking yeah, this whole like, universe together it, I, I i loved the end of that he's like there's an fbi agent here he wants to talk to you the, a young woman mm-hmm. i didn't think she was fbi she's really pretty mm-hmm. he's like you want me to tell her to go away he's like didn't say anything and then he's like well what's her name and then it cuts to black oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. like oh uh-huh. i love that yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. that's like, that's that kind of, we got to play into the Hannibal, yeah. play up the Hannibal exactly. Lecter thing, which yeah. kind of feels disingenuous. You know, it's like, okay. But I, I guess I like, I think I prefer uh, uh, a man's approach to going like, you know, if you're going to, this is the story about how this guy is so obsessed with catching this mm-hmm. guy that mm-hmm. he, you know, it's like we just blot out everything else but mm-hmm. his path through the, mm-hmm. through the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I do agree with you that it's like it's a standalone movie, whereas yeah. Red Dragon is part of a trilogy. Yep, mm-hmm. that I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, and like that's not a dig against either movie. It's just there. It's different. It's just it's a different yeah. type of movie. I it's guess. just a different yeah. structure. Yeah. So Brian Cox uh, playing, uh, and you haven't seen the Mad Mads Mikkelsen, um, no. Hannibal Lecter. No. Okay. No, I haven't. Okay, because he's really good. I imagine like, Mads yeah. is good in everything, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I've seen like I've seen like clips, yeah, but I've never watched it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's really good. I guess the thing that I always had with Anthony Hopkins was I could never really imagine him as a psychiatrist. Like, even though I know they have yeah. a scene in Red Dragon mm-hmm. showing, but he's got they a ponytail, do. and you're like, yeah, who is this the guy? ponytail really <laughs> caught me off guard. I forgot about that, and it, it, I got a real jump scare out of that ponytail, man. <laughs> Yeah. See, I, I, when he's like sitting there talking to him, like when he, when Edward Norton is sitting in his office talking to him, I do see that side of him, and mm-hmm. I was glad that they show that because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, now I do believe that Hannibal is a psychiatrist, just yeah. the way he's talking to him. Mickelson is the psychiatrist. Like you can like, believe you don't that, doubt that guy. It. Yeah. yeah, that nice. guy is the psychiatrist and the serial killer who can pull it off on the slide, and you you can't get a hold of him or you know mm-hmm. pin it on yeah. him. So he's like that. Uh, Anthony Hopkins owns Silence of the Lambs. I right, mean, he's obviously. like the creepy monster yeah. in the basement. Mm-hmm. And then so Brian Cox, uh, not, I guess, knowing that this was going to be <laughs> like <laughs> such an iconic uh, character right. later on, um, it, they put him in a, like an antiseptic cell. But I yeah. think that's part of like Michael Mann's visual I was gonna say, yeah. aesthetic. The, everything about it, it's very sterile. Everything mm-hmm. is very sterile in this. Like as far mm-hmm. as the, the facility. It's yeah. all white. Yeah. And, it's all white. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, we should say. So, I mean, like the the, the photography on this uh, is uh, by Dante Spinotti, and he has done pretty much all of Michael Mann's uh, yeah. movies. Beautiful. Like he makes people laying in bed talking looks look like mm-hmm. the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like I really like how this movie uses day for night to its advantage. Like it, yeah. there's some obvious day for night shooting, but they just bus that blew up so high that it's vice city lighting and it's not nighttime anymore so it just looks really Mm -hmm. fucking cool and even there's shots 
of um Will Graham's wife walking around the hallway at night and like the blinds are like shining light on her and it just like <laughs> it looks so beautiful. I love that about Michael Mann movies. Yeah. This is I mean, I guess when you think of like Vice City or that yeah. kind of neon looking yes. like this is part of that era and yes. like established that look was you know part of it so much beautiful 80s architecture with oh like straight lines and white and yeah. all my high ceilings and big windows i love it yeah but uh spinati also shot red dragon yeah which, <laughs> you're like that what movie, <laughs> uh, that movie, like it's way uglier of a movie and it just looks like every 2000s thriller of that time you know it's that's got to be like a really weird thing i mean like is. uh i know daniel pearl was the cinematographer on the original texas chainsaw massacre mm-hmm. and he was invited back to do the 2009 one mm-hmm. so it's like okay you're gonna tell the same story again how would you do it now? Right. Or, sorry, 2003. How would you do it now versus how you did it then? Mm-hmm. That's got to be the same thing here, right? He's coming in and like, okay, we're going to do, we're going to try not to do yeah. it the way Michael Mann did it. I don't hate it. Like it, it very, it does have a timestamp on it for yeah, sure. It just like has it, less personality. It feels, in this movie. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I don't, I don't hate it though. I think it still looks good. And, and I know we're going probably way off topic here, but we're still talking <laughs> about Hannibal Lecter mm-hmm. movies. Like Ridley Scott's Hannibal has its own, uh, distinctive visual. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it looks like a Ridley Scott movie. Right. The, like you sure, look at Gladiator yeah. and Hannibal. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I can see that those, but it's, it does seem like red dragons visual up style is trying to mimic what was done mm-hmm. uh, by Tak Fujimoto on silence of the lambs. There's a mm-hmm. lot of Edward Norton's talking directly into the camera and cuts to yeah. you know Anthony Hopkins talking directly into the camera. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something that Jonathan Demi and, and tech Fujimoto pioneered in, in now Spinati's copying that right. to make it go like, okay, you can, you can, you remember this is part of the same mm-hmm. brand, the same package. Right. Which I think is part of the reason I'm like, I'm okay with it. Because it kind of ties it together for me. And mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. And then the uh, the visual style here, like is that very, uh, mm-hmm. very 80s. It is very yeah, 80s. I love but it. It's, but it's a good 80s. It's like glossy, like West Coast, like California, modern 80s. I love yeah. it. So um, Cox's performance is very different. He's a little more flippant. Mm-hmm. He's less mm-hmm. controlled, I think, than... Uh, more antagonistic, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he only appears, I think, like three scenes mm-hmm. in the movie. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it seemed like he was good, but I think ultimately it's going to be Anthony Hopkins as yeah. the better screen Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have Francis Dollarhide. He is the Tooth Fairy... Mm. And he has played in this movie by Tom Noonan, the scariest motherfucker in Hollywood. My <laughs> God, this guy! Whenever he pops up, it just like I mean, it makes he's me sweaty. Just you know, so creepy. <laughs> yeah, I saw this movie when I was way too young, and that scene right <laughs> where he is first revealed when you first see his face <laughs> that has stuck with me my entire with life. The, with the pantyhose. Yep, yeah, yeah. I've been terrified of Tom Noonan since I saw this movie. It's just to me, it's it's a it's a no brainer. I don't think Ray Fiennes is nearly as good as Tom Noonan. I like a creepy, whispery guy over like a muscly, yelly guy. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. They they play them they play the part differently very differently very differently so yeah. it's hard to pick one over the mm-hmm. other because the way they play it I think they both did really well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I like both styles because they both fit the movie they're in yeah I guess you know? when you meet Tom and they keep Tom Noonan off I mean it's like a fucking hour or something Ooh, it's I think a long before. time I was literally about to be like did I miss something have no. we not seen him yet <laughs> <laughs> and it just the little kind of bit of fourth wall breaking joke of like here I am when he like when the camera pans up over his face yeah. just makes it that much more uncomfortable like this Tom he, Noonan makes me so fucking uncomfortable yes, in this movie like very much so yeah. yeah I think that's what he brings to it mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. is yeah, I mean, he just plays like a misfit from society in a way that's like, you know, this guy can blend in. I mean, I guess we see him do that, which He's I like. He's unassuming. Yeah. I, yeah. Guess, I think what makes it more unnerving than Ray Fiennes is that um, Ray Fiennes seems scared. Yeah. Yeah. This guy doesn't. Yeah. No. This yeah, guy yeah. seems He's to in know control. exactly who he is, and that's yeah. terrifying. Mm-hmm. That's really, that's interesting, because the book doesn't really, I never got the impression from the book that he was um you know like cause they're trying to make it, there's a distinction between his francis dollar Hyde personality and the great red dragon right. at some point in the book there's like arguments between them 
after he is introduced to Reba, you know, yeah. falls and, we, and blind we see girl. that in Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I think you know, yeah, the novel does have a scene where he goes to the Smithsonian or whatever and mm-hmm. gets the William ba- Blake painting. I love that scene. Yes. See, I hated it. I was like, I love that scene. <laughs> I remember. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's so that was like, oh, there's no coming back from this. <laughs> yeah, is it too over the top? It is. is yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think it, it kind of because I didn't know, that, you know, when I saw the movie. I was like, well, this must be in the book. And then you read the book and you're like, yeah, it goes there. Uh, I mean, all right. The book has that ending. I mean, it follows it pretty closely. But yeah, um, yeah that was uh, that was his, I guess his, his, yeah, well, he's creepy without like having to actually go and say like, you know, he's becoming, right? So he right. has that kind of, I guess he's trying to project this like he's not scared. He's powerful mm-hmm. all the time. And he's going out and killing these families. Um, yeah, I think he's the creeper of it, too. Yeah. And I think the kind of having the sympathy for him kind of takes that edge off of your serial killer. Mm-hmm. I didn't really feel yeah. sympathy for Buffalo Bill. No. Mm-mm. You know? Mm-hmm. Nope. See, yeah. this is exactly why I don't like backstories for villains. Because yes. then you start to feel something for them. Exactly. And it takes away from it. Yeah. That's why the Joker sucked. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but they do kind of do that here because, you know, I guess the thing he he does like have this kind of romantic first love relationship with this blind woman. Mm-hmm. He's got a what is it? A cleft uh, cleft palate. Yeah. Yeah. And so um I think that goes into like, you know, a lot of his backstory. I think his mom may have done that to him or he was disfigured at birth. I can't remember, but you know, um so, you know, the idea that like somebody looking at him uh, he meets this blind girl and she can't see him. And then, you know, they form this kind of like, it's just the creepiest, like, you know, cause you know, he's a serial killer oh, God. and this poor woman who seems defenseless, I guess, because she's, you know, blind. Yeah. This is a problem I never thought about having. Like uh, this whole scenario <laughs> is never something I thought about. Like, you know, we like blind people are able to le- lead, you know, pretty independent lives for the most part without being at risk. But like now I'm like, now I'm just thinking about the fact, like, what if you guys, how would you feel if you found out you had sex with a serial killer and you didn't know it? Like, mm-hmm. let's say you had sex with someone later on, they turned out to be a serial killer. Like, wh- oh, what do you do with that information? How do you process that? Like, that's well, just so wild. Like, why didn't I know? Yeah. You know, what did I miss? Uh, well, why and, did they choose me? Why right. did they spare me? Yeah. Why, yeah. you know? And a lot of why <laughs> questions. All that dialogue is in Red Dragon. Yeah. 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 She's very, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's I remember very, at yeah. the end of yeah, the book. She's yeah. very much like, how did I not know? And mm-hmm. he's yeah. like, you wouldn't have known. He's like, I didn't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But man, just like, that's such. It's such a unique and specific circumstance that, like, having to work through that in therapy, I don't even know where you start. Like, it's just, that's a total mind fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, Joan Allen in this mm-hmm. movie. Um, and in the other one's Emily, um, Emily um, Watson. Watson. Emily Watson. Yeah. Yeah. I liked Emily Watson better. I didn't care for really either of them, but I, think I, I, I believed liked Emily her Watson more better. as a blind woman. Yeah. Yeah. Emily and Watson? She's, mm-hmm. She's just a little too sweet and innocent in that movie. They play it up a lot. They do play the sweet and <laughs> yeah. innocent thing up a lot. Um, but I believe I like that they don't in this one. Yeah. It's like she's kind of forwardly. No, aggressive. I like that they don't in this one, yeah. but I I don't think she plays a blind Joan well. Allen's just Joan like Allen. not, she doesn't yeah. play it well. And she's given less scenes, I think, to work with. Definitely. Yeah, like, I think they build that relationship better in Red Dragon. Yeah, it went a little slower pace in Red Dragon. Yeah, and it makes more one. sense. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a couple more interactions, mm-hmm. and then they get together, and it makes mm-hmm. more sense to me. This yeah. seems very rushed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I think of the the the, the whole idea that like we're we're telling the Will the Will Graham no, story. I get that. It's like For well, then sure. all that stuff kind of. So I, I guess that. that's a thing we're saying. Like, well, but, she does better in that movie, but, to, but yeah. the focus is different. But to like. But to rush it and then spend like five minutes on a sex scene, yeah, that's a little a weird. A really uncomfortable yeah. sex scene. That it's like felt maybe like it was never gonna end. Maybe spend uh, a little more time building up the relationship and less time showing them awkwardly in bed. Uh, well, wasn't there stuff being communicated there? Like his first apparently yeah, orgasm. Too much. He, uh, I don't. I don't need it, Colin. It's the, too much information. It. <laughs> it's being conveyed here. That's the problem. It's like this is what it's like to be with a living woman. You know, this yeah. is someone who desires me. This is a. Uh, uh, he listens to her heartbeat like she yeah. does with the, um, the tiger. The yeah. tiger. What, okay, what did I miss something? What is the significance of this tiger scene? See, again, they explain it in Red Dragon. I, did, I must have missed it. It makes that. sense in yeah. that movie, but it doesn't make sense mm-hmm. in this movie. It just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Because he was doing photography, or he was um, uh, 
helping them with uh, film to photograph the zoo mm-hmm. animals, yeah. right? And not animals. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, well, I think he means he's hunting yeah, people yeah, in this yeah. one, yeah. but he actually does. I he think does, provide he that. He does film. Yeah. in Red Dragon, yeah. and like they have a whole conversation about how much she loves animals and her first memories. Oh, yeah, seeing right. anything is at a zoo and all this stuff. Oh, right. And it makes sense that. Yeah, in yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah. And this is just like, oh, we're had it. We're hanging out with a tiger we're, now. Yeah. Gonna, okay. We're going to cuddle with this real tiger. God, yeah. this made me sweaty. Watching this lady put her fingers in this sleeping tiger's <laughs> mouth. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just like, oof, I've seen Roar. I know this can go sideways yep, real fast. Real like, yeah. But it doesn't. Thank it doesn't, God. No. Um, we don't go there. All right. So we have. Uh, the tiger's fine, by the way. The tiger's <laughs> fine. Just heavily sedated by the end of the movie. It's okay. Um, uh, um, Jack Crawford is Dennis Farina in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harvey Keitel in the other one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Very I don't know. Sleepy Harvey Keitel. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, he I'm, he's not doing much in that one. I'm Dennis Farina yeah. all the way, and this is. I'm Jack- Dennis Farina because until you said that, I forgot it was Harvey. Keitel. Yeah, because he doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, like he has no personality. I'm not sorry. really. No. I expected more from Harvey Keitel. And yeah, Red I did too. Yeah. I did too. Because Farina, if I remember, was Farina actually a real life cop at one point? He's or got something? that but energy. He has, has to be. that yeah. energy, right? Yeah. Yes. Where he was he, born that way, I like, feel did like. Did someone just pluck him from the Chicago PD? Right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Keitel is like no slouch, right? I mean, he's yeah. done a lot of this. But like, yeah. Farina is just like, I totally believe this guy mm-hmm. is when he's like picking up phones and yelling at people, you're going to be here. And he's very specific in like a linear order. Like, these are the things you're going to do. Yep. Yeah. Um, they get he's- into a shouting match later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tell each other to fuck off. Yeah. I want to tell my boss to fuck off. I love it. You started this and we'll quit when I say it's quit, pal, or yeah. whatever. So fuck off. Like his yeah. energy is very like J.K. Simmons and Spider Man. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. He's very good. Um, I felt his stress. Like I felt his the yeah. stress his character was under coming through the screen. You yeah. Know? Like this dude needs to retire. He's going to yeah. have a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's going to have a heart attack on the job. Yeah. Yeah. He's a. Uh, yeah, I liked him a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Who else is in the cast? The carryovers between Freddie um, Lowndes. Freddie Lowndes, yeah. yeah. The reporter from the Tattler. I will say I like that in Manhunter he was really hateable because that makes his story more satisfying, I think. Yeah. Whereas he was not that ha- not nearly as hateable in Red Dragon. Yeah, because Philip no. Seymour Hoffman in Red Dragon, I think, like underplays a lot He's of the... He's just a little he, sleazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he plays it well. I think it works. Yeah. But as far as like being a hateable character, yeah. it comes off more in this yeah, yeah. this Stephen is Lang. Stephen lang yeah, yeah. Uh, years before he was in avatar baby Stephen lang yeah wow <laughs> years before don't breathe and he was the old blind man uh he's yeah. got a good like used car salesman energy though in this yeah I, that's what i like yeah. about yeah. his performance and that he is Very like sleazy to the max he he's is. got the because did philip seymour hoffman have the two girls at the in the parking lot before he gets abducted, so. you know. Uh, but this guy no. does, right? He's no, the cocaine. It was someone took his parking spot. Was how it happened. Oh yeah. right, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he gets abducted by the tooth fairy and taken back. And mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I, I, I'm always kind of curious uh, when actors have to kind of pretend that they're afraid, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. you can hear it in a person's mm-hmm. voice. This guy, I totally believe. Yeah, like Stephen you Lang, could hear yeah. that tremble, you know, mm-hmm. as he was like kind of gulping through, like he couldn't get enough air. His heart's going mm-hmm. too fast, to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, reading the, uh, the the letter that the Tooth Fairy gives him to read. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, sending him, uh, Tooth Fairy ends up like uh, biting his tongue off. Yeah, it doesn't play out in this as well as it does in Red Dragon. Because you actually see, you actually see him do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I will... I think okay, I think that part's better in Red Dragon, but I think the wheelchair part is better in Manhunter because it goes so quickly in Red Dragon, you don't even get a chance to like register what's happening. It builds up in this, yeah, and yeah. You, I like that you hear it before you see it. You hear it. the squeaks, yeah. and then he's like, "What the fuck is?" This? Yeah, you hear it yeah. like coming down the concrete. But in Red Dragon, it's like someone kicked it down a driveway and it falls over. Mm-hmm. Like that's all, and it's over. Like, yeah, it's. I quick. agree. It's better yeah. executed in mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Terror. That was a scene that scared the shit out of me as a kid. I thought like that was a thing you could see in parking garages. Flaming <laughs> 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 wheelchair. Yeah. 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 Wheelchairs. Yes. Poor, poor little Michaela. I know. <laughs> Afraid poor of such child. unnatural <laughs> things. Yeah. <laughs> poor child Michaela with her her crazy fears. I know, right? <laughs> in parking <laughs> it's no life. wonder I grew up to be an adult with anxiety, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> you know? Uh 
because of that's the normal movies. kids are worrying about quicksand. Hey, you're quicksand, worrying about yeah. sharks <laughs> and pools. Yeah. You're, you're worried about inflamed wheelchairs yes. coming at you yes. to work in your eyes. Never go in a parking lot yeah. oh, again. Yep. Yeah. Um, what did? Um, well, I guess uh, the so is Hannibal Lecter right? Did uh, Will Graham? set freddie lounge up to be murdered oh absolutely yes he did Duh, and he knew that was going to happen but it's you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet yeah. kind of situation you know how does he how do you know he knew it was going to happen I mean, he just know he knows all this stuff that's his job to know this stuff you know i don't know there's, yeah. there's a moment where uh, it was a calculated risk freddie's you know? like i'm gonna take you take a picture with me mm-hmm. you know in front of the window which is going to identify him basically mm-hmm. and there's a shot in this where graham kind of like wait and he looks over at mm-hmm. uh, uh, Jack, and then they look, and then it just kind of happens, yeah. and they don't stop it. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, did he actually, you know, get this guy out of his life mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. by yeah. sacrificing him to a serial killer? But I like that the way that they set this trap was by insulting the tooth fairy in the newspaper yeah. by being like, um, Everyone's fucked your mom, including you, and like grade school insult. And it's very bad. Yeah, like, I love it. Like if you were to just read it all out, it's like pretty sure he's gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he did his mom. Yeah. Already did all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and that's like what it is. And like that's what gets him to. He right. falls into. He, he falls, falls into, into a trap. Yeah. Yeah. He falls into like the most basic grade school bully like, trap ever. You think yeah. he'd be more evolved? But no, no, nope. nope. He's nope, a nope. child. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? He's on his way to the becoming. And yeah. I mean, can't. Uh, um, Fuck you! I'm not gay. Yeah. Like, that's exactly what it is. And is he the, just doubles down in a way that makes it look more true, you right? Know? <laughs> like, well, because I can't even idiot. remember like why they were calling him the Tooth Fairy because he was biting his he victims biting and he had those victims. crazy incisor teeth yeah. that were like really big or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but he was biting his male victims. No, they they added that in. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. He bit the female victims. Oh, okay, because that I wasn't was a sure. lie they put out there, and they're like. Mm-hmm. Well, the the cops were calling him the Tooth Fairy. That was uh, because he the... bit the women. Yeah. Oh, okay. There was there was bite marks they on had the women. The bite marks. That's, that was part of mm-hmm. how they were. That was part of their evidence. Him. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But they were dentures. I thought so that's the fairy how... yeah. part of it was an uh, mm-hmm. inside joke that they were telling. No, them. it was no. just a tooth teeth fairy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, no, they were trying to make it sound. Other cast members that are between the well, the wife. We got uh, Kim Greased, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. the star of the Ageless Classic that I don't think has made it to this show yet. Chud. That's been on my list for a while. Wow, Chud has not the made it. Cannibalistic but, humanoid underground dwellers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anytime I've like almost brought it, we watch something very similar, yeah. and I have to change my pick. <laughs> 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 I don't think we've done that one. We haven't. I don't no. think so. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. been on my Chud, list, yeah. but we keep watching things that are too similar, and I have to push it back. Yeah, she was a big deal at this point because yep. she had been in Terry Gilliam's uh, Brazil, mm-hmm. um, which I thought about bringing, but I think it's too much. Yeah, so over, over, it's over a bit of a movie. Yeah, yeah. I think it's too um, much. <laughs> Who's the wife in um, who's uh, somebody? Oh, not um, good. Um, uh, Mary Louise Parker. Oh, yeah. OK. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say neither of them have much to do at all. I think they're both fine. Yeah. 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 At registering the same, I yeah. guess, yeah. necessary. I think uh, Mary Louise Parker does have a little more to work with because she has some more emotional scenes. But otherwise, they're both mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. And. Um, well, the one actor, I think. I mentioned it to you. I don't know if we said it on the podcast, but the guy who is actually in Red Dragon and Manhunter and Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal mm-hmm. is Frankie Frankie Faison, who plays yeah. Barney the orderly. But in this, he's like a lieutenant of the St. Louis Police lieutenant Department. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations, yeah. for sir, for appearing in about as many Hannibal Lecter's mm-hmm. movies as Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Hopkins has been in three or four. I, don't know, I haven't seen all of them. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen Hannibal them. Rising. I haven't either. So he's been in three, right? I think so. That sounds okay. right. Oh, so he's been in more it was- Hannibal right. Lecter movies than Anthony Hopkins has. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> it's your franchise. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, there's, love- a, there's a brief, like, two-second, one-line cameo by Chris Elliott. Yeah, yeah. I I thought I was seeing things. I was I like, that's terrible. not Chris Elliott. And then I heard him talk, and I was like, okay, that sure is definitely is. Chris Elliott. <laughs> So yeah, weird. But in like a non comedy. No, he's kinda. like a boardroom he's, guy. Yeah. They're in they're in like a cop meeting and yeah. he just has like two lines mm-hmm. and it's real quick. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't fingerprints, he was something else, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. But it's yeah. when they're going through the like, this is what we the got in Leighton Prince and this yeah. is what we yeah. There was another guy, I can't remember his name now. Dan, somebody he was in uh not just shoot me. 
he was in a TV show. That, uh, well, whatever. He was mm-hmm. one of the experts. I think he was Price, the fingerprint guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a lot of famous faces. I was like, oh, I remember him from TV shows. Him from Life Goes On. Uh, mm-hmm. but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wasn't uh, the, the, the X-ray tech or wasn't he the dad in Life Goes On? I don't know. I've never I, watched it. Oh, yeah, I've okay. never seen Life Goes On. Uh-huh. Well, with the kid, he had Down Syndrome, Corky, and no? Nope. Anything? What okay. year was that? That was the late, early 90s, maybe? Hmm. Okay. Late no 80s? Idea. Okay. No idea. Um, all right. So the biggest changes mm-hmm. uh, that the movie makes is in the ending, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, one of the biggest things is the actual, like, red dragon symbolism there's like hardly any in this. Yeah, there's a, there's lot, a lot in more. Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. Is there a lot in the book? Is yeah. That a thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. like Ray mm-hmm. finds back is covered in a tattoo. There's yeah. The painting. Actually, yeah, we never get that. The back tattoo. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of right. symbolism in Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! You know, like I I, I totally missed that. You're yeah, right. The, there's no the, like the only thing in this, and it's also in Red Dragon, is the symbol on the tree. Yeah. Yep, he carves that's the, it. Yeah. While he's waiting to break into the house. Which I love all the sick little details of like how many hours he spent just sitting in that tree yeah. I know. watching them. When I'm he, like, I love that scene in both movies when mm-hmm. he's like walking through the woods and he finds the candy wrapper and realizes mm-hmm. like, oh my God, he was casing him out in the tree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a great love scene. it. Well, the movie does a pretty good job. And maybe it's just the story. I don't know of, uh, you know, you kind of feel like you're discovering things mm-hmm. at the same time as Will Graham. Yeah. Did you ever feel like you were ahead of him? Well, no. I mean, you saw the, you know, as familiar you are, we are with the story, but the first time he encountered But it's it. how you get there, though, like, because he pieces mm-hmm. together all these tiny things, like the way he figures out that he took off the gloves, touched their eyes, and uh-huh. then put the gloves back on, and no one believes yeah. him. And he's, and he's talking to himself. He's yeah. like, talc powder. There was no talc powder in the bathroom. Yeah. And he's, like, just talking to himself, but he realized, uh, oh, mm-hmm. it's great. Mm-hmm. His dialogue changes throughout the movie. He becomes more assertive and aggressive as he keeps going on. Yeah. As he keeps getting this kind of into the killer mode. At the beginning, he's always talking about you, you, you. Mm-hmm. But in the end, he's in the, you know, this is my house. I own this house. Mm-hmm. These are, you know, mm-hmm. my windows. This is my whatever. Yeah. As he's fully assuming. He's like the, the red dragon. Now. Yeah. He's <laughs> the killer <clears throat> going through there. Um, totally lost my train of thought there. What are we so, talking we're about? We're talking about how uh, the changes at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the biggest uh, is um, Manhunter gets rid of a convoluted, I thought, uh, final act of both the novel and uh, the movie Red Dragon, where Dollar Hyde fakes his own death, and because he killed this like a guy driving a van or something mm-hmm. that he found and stashed mm-hmm. him, burned him alive in the house, and then he tracks uh, uh, Graham to his house in Florida mm-hmm. and menaces his family and the kid, or then he uses reverse psychology, right? What he's learned about, you know, a dollar hide mm-hmm. to attack him as like a, a yeah, kid. Yeah, because he's read his journal and he knows like all the things that his mom would say to him and all the abuses and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And he recreates that and yeah. says those things. But it's actually Molly, his wife, if I remember correctly, who deals the killing blow in Red Dragon. Yeah, she, he's he. They've both shot each other multiple times, and then Molly shoots him in the head. She gets the final, right. the final kill. Yeah. So Manhunter gets rid of all that. Yep. Like mm-hmm. completely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and kind of cleanly ends the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they go to Dollar Hyde's house, right. We've established that Will has basically now entered. He's, you know, the killer. He's in killing mm-hmm. mode. He's doing the parallels to what the killer does as he's tracking this guy down. But there's that moment where he's like, you know, stop it. You know, he's like, I got to mm-hmm. stop this guy. And so mm-hmm. he runs through the big glass door and there's a huge or a glass window. And there's a big shootout that takes and place. And the best part of this is it's all with Inagata DeVita playing in the background. Yeah, and like in this beautiful I 80s house love with like it. these giant pane windows shattering and like, I don't know. It's, it's just so great. <laughs> oh, it's so stylized. I love it. What'd you think of the, uh, I remember at the time thinking it was weird. He does a lot of, uh, man does a lot of um, like abrupt, like, like stuttering almost. Yeah. yeah. It's like things freeze or yeah. something and then it cuts immediately to some other kind of weird angle. Um, it, it's weird because it seems to only show up in this scene yeah 
Well, there's yeah. a bunch of like jump cuts like throughout yeah. the movie yeah. where he was, there was like a shot on a guy and instead of cutting away to something and coming mm-hmm. back, he just splices right in the middle of yeah. the scene. Mm-hmm. There it's, was a couple times that I caught it and it's it's distracting because mm-hmm. it's like that looks like a bad editing mm-hmm. cut, not a, like a choice, <laughs> not a purposeful Yeah, it style, looks like yeah. it was an accident that got left in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it read that way when I saw it originally yeah. and it, re- it kind of reads that way now mm-hmm. but then you go like okay he knew what he was doing it's some kind of he was uh, experimenting yeah. i suppose yeah i know it's clearly a choice but it is a little distracting mm-hmm. yeah i don't think anybody would do that now no um i don't think he would even does that in his movies now yeah and it brings <laughs> i guess the the climax kind of brings these two guys together and you know it's like well graham is able to actually like blast the guy away mm-hmm. I like the way that he finds the, uh, the the killer was watching the videotapes. Like that was a great scene, you know. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the you, you watch these tapes, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like you saw this and track it back to the lab and all that mm-hmm. stuff. A lot of good stuff here. I love all the lab work. I could watch that shit all day long, That's like so that. Yeah. I mean, we chew up these police procedurals whenever we watch. Them. Yeah, I love them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I love They're them. So yep. good. Now I got the itch. Now I just want to watch a ton of stuff like this now. So. I know. I'll yeah, probably be watching this, Mindhunter. Yeah. And, I'm like, I, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, because he only got, like, what, two seasons that they were supposed to be, like, a third mm. of Mindhunter? Yeah. God. Is there anything else we're neglecting in uh in, I feel in like Mindhunter? it. I'm I know, yeah, I know. We yeah. spent most of the time comparing the two. I mean, we, were, both, we knew but, we were going to. Yeah. Yeah. But we're saying it has, there's strength and weaknesses, better performances, better character, mm-hmm. you know, or, uh, actors linked to a role. Versus the other one. Right. And then, like, the visual styles are very different. Um, yeah, there's pros and cons to both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I guess you're... It just depends on your preference. Okay. Yeah. Well, if eventually we're going to recommend or not recommend this movie, mm-hmm. should we... What is your? I mean, Holly here just saw... Yeah. You watched, seen Red Dragon did, before, yeah. but watched it's, Manhunter for the first time. You did it back to back today. Yeah. No, I had never seen either movie. Oh, either one. Yeah. I watched them both for the first time today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I watched you, Red Dragon. about that. Yeah. Yeah. I watched Red Dragon this morning and then came in and watched this. Yeah. So I can talk about that. I wrap oh, up. Or- <laughs> I watched I, another thing. Okay. So I watched Red Red Dragon this morning too. And I was, um, I don't know why, but I watched it with uh, headphones on mm. and fuck that score. Oh my God. Danny Elfman, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like it just <laughs> do, 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 like constantly like I it's especially the title sequence of that movie gets mm-hmm. real loud and obnoxious. But I, I know that people complain about the score in Manhunter being like aggressively eighties, but the whole movie's aggressively 80s, yeah. so I'm okay it with fits. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually really like the overdone synth and all the cool mm-hmm. stuff. I mm-hmm. love the vibe. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but like, Danny Elfman doing a Hannibal movie just doesn't seem right to me because he's not serious enough. He's too, I don't know, quirky yeah, for my taste. Howard Shore, the first in Silence of the Lambs, Which and he basically perfect, yeah. set like this is what serial killer movies sound like in the nineties. Right. And, and it's then uh, mm-hmm. it was Hans Zimmer for Hannibal, mm, right? Which and is also great, also yeah. a great choice. <laughs> yeah. And then Danny Elfman for, for uh, Red Dragon. Red yeah. Dragon. Oh, and yeah, we're we're really bearing the lead here. Uh, Brett Ratner directed Red Dragon, so like that tells you what caliber caliber we're working at compared to Michael Mann. You know, like yeah. I would say it's probably Brett Ratner's best movie by a long shot. I think. Um, but I mean, that's an incredibly low bar. Like this mm. man directed the worst X-Men movie ever made. Oh yeah. 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 You know, like among many other terrible movies, he directed movie 43 often considered he, one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah. Like he didn't do the rundown. Is that black? black no, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, and he's also like a notoriously terrible person, but, uh, yeah, I've heard that yeah, about him. yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we've done a couple of Brett Ratner movies. Have we? Yeah, I think so. Really? I think, I, I think so. I feel like I brought one. What did I bring? What, a Rush Hour movie? <laughs> what did I bring? That's right, he did Rush Hour. Yeah. You did that yeah. thing with uh, Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson, right? Am I right? Tower Heist. Okay, ta- there's Fool's actually... Fool's Gold, uh, is that his? I can't remember. There's a Just really good joke on the TV show community about Brett Ratner and Tower Heist that I'm going to have to post on our social media. It's like a short clip, but it's <laughs> it's like what a character just ranting about how Tower Heist is the best movie she's ever seen and Brett Ratner is the best director and it just makes someone implode. <laughs> yeah. He also directed oh. like... No retreat, no surrender. What? He directed that? Wait, hold on. No. no. That I, was like in the, the... Hold on. Hold on. No. 
That's not what I'm <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. He's, that's not he it. wasn't working back then. He's that's directed not, like every Mariah Carey <laughs> music video ever. Mm. He's done a shit ton of music videos. Every Mariah Carey music video has yeah. been directed by and him. Michael Mann went on to, I don't think I've ever seen Ali. Is Ali good? It's good. Yeah. Like, I mean, it. I guess like your mileage would vary based on how you feel about like sports biopics, you know, because there's a lot of them. But that was like groundbreaking at the time, yeah. you know. The good ones, I suppose, even if you don't give a shit about the sport, yeah, exa- you know, exactly, it, uh, exactly. It still wins you yeah. over. Yeah, no, Brett Ratner. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking at his his IMDb here. I'm gonna say Red Dragon is his best movie. Like Tower Highest movie, forty three Hercules. He did that twenty fourteen Hercules. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Rock. Yep, right, right, yep. Right. Okay. So right. yeah, X Men: The Last Stand, the worst X Men movie. You know, yeah. this guy is just. And now he's unemployable. So yeah, there you go. yep. Because he had Rat Pack Entertainment. We're talking a mm-hmm. lot about Red Dragon. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about Manhunter. Yes. We're going to tell you what we thought of it uh, and probably which one we prefer. You're going to find out uh, at the uh, at the end of this episode. But first, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder which one Igor prefers. What would <laughs> Igor's Francis Dollar Hyde look like? Put some pantyhose over his head. Yeah, I don't know why that's so scary. It is an arresting Why is image. the pantyhose? What yeah. was uh, Refines wearing? It was a dirty pantyhose, like it was oh, okay. like gray yeah. instead of yeah. yeah it's just, it but he was so ripped, like he was so muscular. You saw him working out all the time in that movie, and that, to me, that's like less scary. Yeah, it's Richard Armitage. Is that his name? He was. Um, uh, the lead uh, dwarf in the Hobbit movies. Yeah, yeah, yes. He's uh, Francis Dollarhide in uh, in Hannibal. Really? Yeah. That's an interesting choice. Okay, well yeah. now maybe I need to watch. Hannibal. I just remember him, the Great Red Dragon. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, that's where we're. Okay. Oh, you know, what? I think uh, we've talked a lot about um, movies that he's. Oh, gotcha, oh, yeah. Right. He did, like, Santa Slay and shit. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Gotcha. All right, well, there we want to remind the good folks at home how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Set Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak, Freak Show, show Yahoo.com. Yahoo. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. MF Matt, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants us to know that we are inducting two people from this movie Ooh. onto the Wall of Fame, and the first being Brian Cox. Wow, that is exciting. Welcome, sir. One of the two other movies that we've done with Brian Cox, because you got to get three yeah. to be on the wall. Mm-hmm. So he did Manhunter. He was also Mr. Krieg in Trick or Treat. Mm-hmm. At the end, right? Yeah. He was kind of oh, yeah, 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 John yeah, the Carpenter driver. makeup. Yes, yes, forgot about that. And he was in The Long Kiss Goodnight. Oh, wow. Oh, that, that Rennie one. Harlan movie? The Rennie yeah. Harlan movie. I, think he I haven't was seen the that for a while. Uh, guy in that. I can't. Uh, Frankie Faison. There you yeah. go. Uh, Congratulations, On the wall, sir. but like, how did we put him on the wall? Because right, this guy right. w- works a lot, and we've watched three of his movies. We watched Manhunter. Uh-huh. He was a detective in Cat People. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he was in Maximum Overdrive. Wow, what there a cinematic know. universe to be a part of. Yeah. He's in some crazy movies. <laughs> he works a lot. Yeah. You've yeah, seen Frankie Faison a lot. He's Good. one of those guys, I guess you'd call character actors, right. mm-hmm. that... Which is the greatest, I think that's, that's the best place to be as a working actor yes. in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Because you're never the leading man. Mm-hmm. And that means you can be in everything. Yeah, <laughs> yes. you have fun. Yes, yeah. and you get residuals for everything then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, about Manhunter, Apoliva writes in and says, The wheelchair sequence in this movie is more harrowing than in Red Dragon. Agreed, 100%. Uh, Jacob Laws says, First time I saw it, I didn't like it. Michael Mann cut out too much of the book. Second time I watched it, I dug it. I enjoyed it more for its style. Although I do think William Peterson was miscast and should have been replaced with Don Johnson. Don Johnson would have been cool. I know. Like, yeah. now that you're going, like, how come it wasn't Don Johnson? Yeah, well, he's probably I mean, tied up with the show, right. Miami Vice, but. Yes. Hmm. Peterson did a good job. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, okay, I would say Red Dragon is more enjoyable because we had two movies with Hopkins as Hannibal. It gives a viewer an easier time into this world. However, Brian Cox's Hannibal is interesting. The man went from Lecter to the Super Troopers captain and then did work with Hopkins, Hopkins in Red 2. And I love both movies, but I kind of prefer Red Dragon. 
Uh, DJ Malka says, I saw Red Dragon before this, but if I had to choose which to watch, Manhunter wins every time. It's a great movie. And cheers. Um, last wow, it week. sounds like it's a divided nation out there. It's like <laughs> one for each, one for each. Yeah. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Fantasy Island. Oh. Michael Whitaker. Someone else saw it? Yep. <laughs> Apparently so. Michael, well, I don't know. I, I read this and interpret. Did he actually yeah. watch it? Michael Whitaker says, I knew there would be an issue with this movie when I tried reading the Wikipedia entry on it and got lost. Oh, I can't even imagine <laughs> trying to read a plot summary of that movie. Well, that was us trying oh to explain God, them. That yeah. was our episode. Yeah. yeah was like, Oof. holy crap. Um, yeah. But he actually, he says, I actually really like the Malcolm McDowell version of the show. Or Malcolm McDowell. I have to check that out because I am curious. Right. Uh, Richard Kratzer says, speaking of snake symbolism on Fantasy Island, imagine an anaconda era John Voight playing the role of Mr. Rourke. Please, (laughs) Sean, using that accent, welcome us to Fantasy Island. And Sean's not here. Sean is not here. We got to have him do that (laughs) next week. Welcome to Fantasy Island. (laughs) <laughs> well, welcome to fantasy. No, I can't do it. Okay. No, yeah. Uh, Joey Blythe says, I wasn't sure if this was going to be based on the series, but I know nothing about the original series because I couldn't make it past the opening. <laughs> but I think I somehow mixed this with the love boat in my child brain. And I also had no idea the series was rebooted twice. I, it's very easy to mix it with the love boat. Yeah. I feel like I've done that a couple of times too in my brain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I think we were talking about that on the show. Yeah. That- Fantasy Island and the Love Boat scene. It's, yeah, it's very much like Adam's Family and the Monsters. Yeah, yeah. very mm-hmm. similar. And the week before, we watched a movie called Hard to Kill. And <laughs> Eamon McCluster, McClusker says, thank you guys for doing Hard to Kill. It brought back my days of falling into a Seagal-shaped hole of cheap martial arts movies. Some of his movies are good fun, but then there's Attack Force. You've watched some bad movies, but this is a whole new scale of bad. It started out as Harvester. A science fiction movie about Seagal bringing down an invasion of super strength aliens. Oh I don't recommend you watch it, but guys, you're, if you're concerned about Holly turning this summer into the summer of Se- Seagal, bring Attack Force, and I guarantee no more Seagal. <laughs> well, I'm, now I'm curious because I want to see sci fi Seagal. Yeah. I Never know, right? seen that before. <laughs> so now I'm intrigued. I know. <laughs> maybe we'll watch a trailer for this. Hmm. And see. His worst <laughs> movie, maybe. Uh, there's so many to choose from. You can't say don't bring something and then give me ideas. And then yeah. tease it <laughs> and be like, look, but look how that. delicious it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. That's reverse psychology and they're on. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for writing in. We really appreciate it. We really it. do. We really do. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight. Kayla! <laughs> What did you think? I guess I was like, it can only go one way. Yeah. Tonight, I guess. <laughs> Which um, one of you is going to yell first? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I love this movie. I, Colin and I have talked for a year, like over the years I've known him, it popped up every once in a while how much we love this movie. And I'm glad that like Sean voiced his, I don't want to say disgust, that's too strong, but his distaste for this movie. So that, <laughs> that stirred us up enough to actually bring it and talk about it. So um, I would say it's probably too good for the freak show, but... I feel like sometimes we deserve to treat ourselves, you know? So, That's true. um, yeah. and like Michael Mann deserves to be talked about and, um, you know, there, he's got so much to choose from, but I think this is his most freak show type movie, especially like the subject matter. Mm. Um, or adjacent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or like, you know, he's got a lot of great like action thrillers, but this is his closest like horror mm. thing. Um, I would love to see him do another movie like this now. Can you imagine if like 2024 Michael Mann's making like a, like a serial killer thriller movie? Like, oh my God, that would be it. so cool. <laughs> yeah. for it. Um, so yeah, dude, go back to what you are so good at. Like Get I to your roots, man. <laughs> exactly. Like my, I mean, Michael Mann's style is just really amazing and just so fun to just let wash over you and enjoy. And it just. I, I can't believe how well he made scenes that are uh, phone calls and conversations and re- decoding stuff and zooming in on fingerprints, like so tense and exciting. And I mean, red dragon is, I will say when I watched it, it was not as bad as I remember it, but it like, it's just, like I said, it's the start of a trilogy and it knows it is. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this is a standalone movie and this movie ha- had to stand on its own. It didn't have Anthony Hopkins to like lean on, you know? Um, so I, I definitely prefer this movie, but I, like I said, I also saw this as a kid and it made a big impression on me too. So got a lot of nostalgia attached to Manhunter. Um, I had the, the, uh, the extra big deluxe edition DVD that came with a file on Francis Dollarhide. <gasps> oh, it was a little mini shit. file and it was, I should see if I can find it. It was super fucking cool. And I, that was like one of my cherished phys- pieces of physical media. So yeah. our listeners know how much, 
we love files. We're fi- and that's what we were literally talking. Sean missed a good file yeah. movie. Lots of good files being thrown around <laughs> and flipped through in this movie. We um, love uh, files are so file effective. porn. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I made Sean a file. Yeah, it is wonderful. <laughs> we would post it, but there's legit sensitive yeah, information I actually in there. Put, so I put it. real information about him in there, so yeah, we can't so. post his file. What was but the he, show that we did where we were in, that it inspired the file? Was it Fallen? Yeah, it was. It's, yeah. It had to have been. Yeah, that was the last cop drama yeah. we watched. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend Manhunter. It's incredible. And if you haven't seen it, just like, I mean, man, it's if nothing else, it's a great time capsule. So enjoy it. Holly, what did you think of uh, Manhunter? Michael so, Manhunter. Yeah, yeah today uh, was my Pepsi challenge. Yes. Um, legit. So I watched Red Dragon this morning, and now we watched Manhunter. And um, I, I went into both of them being completely open-minded. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch two separate movies. I know I'm going to compare them, but I'm going to watch them as separate movies. And I'm going to keep that into consideration. So um, with that, I I didn't know... I I, I, did, I kind of knew what we was getting into because it's a Michael Mann movie, so I kind of understood what we were about to watch. Um, I didn't know what the differences were going to be, um, but I very much enjoyed this movie. This was a solid procedural, and like I said earlier, anytime we're silent watching a movie down here, it means one of two things. <laughs> we either love it or we hate it. <laughs> and yeah, we I, I loved it. It was, it was so good. It had me the entire time. Um, when we're comparing contrast and contrasting the two movies, there's differences in both movies that I, I like parts. Of, I like parts of both movies and I dislike parts of both movies, both movies, but I would, I would truly tell anyone to watch both of them. Um, I agree with what Michaela was saying that this is definitely a standalone movie. Obviously this is pre silence of the lamb. So this is like our, this is like the purest version you know, this is just Absolutely. a straight story, a straight procedural about a, a detective solving um, solving this murder or the serial killer case. Um, whereas Red Dragon is very much uh, the start of a trilogy. But I still, I love the fan service it provides. Like, I'm all here for it. Uh, yeah, I, I like the <laughs> I like the end when he's like, He's like, oh, what's her name? And then it just cuts. Um, so yeah, I I it I like the fan service that you get from Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this this was a great movie. I very much recommend it. Um, I'm not gonna say I like one over the other because I like them both for what they are. So yeah, I'm gonna recommend it for sure. Mm-hmm. It was it was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. It's a good palate cleanser after Fantasy Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really, it really is. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh my god, I watched Manhunter tonight. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff. Recommend Colin. Colin. Uh, it's riveting. It's engrossing. It's thrilling. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I loved this movie when I first saw it. Um, and then I remember seeing Silence of the Lambs and going like, this seems, you know, it was it like no that style. kind of, that, well, no, that, that, you know, the propulsive, like, we got to take the evidence and go through a chain of stuff. And I'm like, seems like that other movie that I saw, I think they went and talked to a guy and that, you know, it was that Wait kind of vague tick. until yeah. you went back and you're like, Oh, that is actually the same, uh, same author. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of, uh, of anything that I actually prefer in uh, red dragon over Manhunter. Um, you know, I mean, I know it has Anthony Hopkins in it. And so I guess, you know, if you could put him in Manhunter, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, maybe that would do something, but, um, and that's not to slam, uh, Brian Cox. He's fine. He's just not, um, he doesn't have the charisma. Yeah. He's not the really scary guy in the, I guess, uh, maybe that's the thing about him. Anthony Hopkins is scary. You know, uh, Brian Cox, uh, less, less frightening. Yeah. Uh, the he's implications. Kind of quirky Brian Cox. <laughs> yeah, he's quirky. I guess yeah. maybe that's the thing. He comes off more casual, where yeah. Anthony mm-hmm. Hopkins is very like snake-like or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Will uh, Will Peter or William Peterson is like like this is his star. Well, I mean, you got to see To Live and Die in L.A. too. I mm-hmm. guess where he basically plays the same. It's that same intensity. Yeah. He's playing himself, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he's like, you know, really carries this movie with like his energy in this is, you know, it's like this guy is going to snap like at any any moment. You're just kind of watching him get, you know, build up that head of steam as he goes on toward the end. Um, 
trying to spin its accolades but i mean you say like it's a great movie it is it's a mm-hmm. great movie it's i great think movie. as a thriller you got to check it out it's uh one of my favorite uh movies i think like of all time mm-hmm. um and yeah it did kind of spawn this entire um you know criminal profiler i think because you think that's got to be like a really weird thing to do to try to you know empathize that much with a serial right. killer you know mm-hmm. um i would absolutely recommend it you have to see it just for i mean the um you know i, I guess that's what i was kind of curious about tonight you know if you hadn't seen it before like i mean it is like a big blast of the 80s you know, it's a shotgun mm-hmm. blast of the 80s but a good one yeah, yeah. but <laughs> see i always wonder if that stuff you know i carry that as like nostalgia and that's mm-hmm. why i like it uh and then you're like okay does it you know does it actually play to like a modern audience when you're mm-hmm. watching it's like but now you know yeah, just I some of the comments re- i think it's refreshing for this group because we're like this is the real 80s mm-hmm. yeah, yeah you yeah. know as opposed to like the stranger things shit yes, we see nowadays exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah okay but that's an interesting yeah perspective to have on you're you're so bombarded with fake 80s that yes. it's like okay like, it's this not is what it was actually like yeah it's yeah. not that like oh what the hell is you know like this people don't wear leg warmers and fucking leotards everywhere where no. like they do yeah, yeah shit like yeah. that yeah it's not yeah. aerobics classes 24 7 yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i mean like this francis dollar Hyatt is to me like one of the creepiest serial killers yep. like in so movies creepy. um yeah and the score um that synth score that they do i think they do it twice but it's mm-hmm. that that building synth when he's like discovering mm-hmm. and you know like mm-hmm. yeah, you saw these tapes and you know, it's just you and me now sport you know mm-hmm. all that stuff is all like all you know it's like this rising synth sound that's mm-hmm. like he's discovering it it's uh, some of the greatest like cinematic uh, uh stuff um this is a movie history that's probably mm-hmm. over embellishing it. <laughs> i like it a lot mm-hmm. that's uh it's my jam so i'm gonna say yes you absolutely 100 percent have to check out manhunter mm-hmm. i i mean i know i know sean prefers red dragon but do we think D- does he just hate this movie? Would he I not know recommend that it at all? Seen well, seen I don't know if he's seen it. Oh, or he saw it a long time ago <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, that makes sense. He's never yeah. seen it. Red like Dragon, it. I guess, to me, has always felt like a movie that doesn't need to exist. You know, yeah, it's like, I, I get. Agree. But I think the fan service thing, like, feels overblown. The 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 way that um, man cuts out a bunch of stuff, it's like he hones in on what the actual story is, where both yeah. Thomas Harris, the guy who wrote the book, went and made yeah. it too top heavy especially toward the end it just feels like the movie's spinning off its axis with mm-hmm. like okay we're going too far into the weeds to explain how this guy faked his own death which is like okay you had me yeah. until he ate the you know the painting and then i'm like that's yeah. over the top mm-hmm. and then all this other stuff it just keeps on getting more over the top where michael mann's like no we're gonna make this like a straight ahead mm-hmm. like kind of grounded um you know thriller mm-hmm. proce- yeah. uh, but that was procedural. 2002 that's that was the it fits <laughs> yeah yeah so i would recommend uh, Ma- uh manhunter and i guess that means uh, we've got three recommends approved. so it's, mm-hmm. uh, you have to watch it yep mm-hmm. you're contractually obligated now mm-hmm. um next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by sean what are we watching next week sean uh i am here as mr tyler's proxy mm-hmm. and step, step forward senator fuka thank you yeah. thank you um i'd like to read a statement yeah. next week <clears throat> this is mr tyler speaking directly <laughs> Next week, we will be watching the ultimate summer slasher sequel, Jaws 2. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Jaws 2. All right. Jaws 2. Here we go. <laughs> We're gonna get At this close. point, we all have done what? All of them except the first original? <laughs> well, we introduced the original. So and we've done this is screening. the last one. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh, what's going to happen when we finish? We've done a whole series now. Is something going to happen? Well, one of them not recorded, yeah. but yeah, we've yeah. done Jaws 3D. You can yeah. Go back and check that. Yeah. And Jaws the Revenge. Yes. So uh, now we're doing Jaws 2. Like, is uh, the portal going to open up or something? Like, we going to trigger something by doing all of them? Yeah. I think I think this is when we all like officially just morph into sharks. Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> Stay just tuned for that. You, podcast for sharks. Yeah. <laughs> it's just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right next week on saturday night freak show we hope you'll join us and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark